The Global Wind Energy Council is uh, an international trade organization uh, working in a number of different areas around the world, uh, in Asia, in Africa, and now in the Middle East, and also in Brazil. Um, we work with governments to support uh, governments in uh, more development of wind. Uh, the, the, the main purpose of this trade organization is to help support the private sector in developing more wind around the world. Uh, currently in the Middle East we don't have a lot of wind, that's, that's the current situation. Uh, around uh, all of the Middle East, uh, around you know, the 15 countries, we have uh, around uh, 5 gigawatts of installed wind capacity now. However, there are very ambitious targets for the future. Uh, if you look at, for example, Saudi Arabia on its own, it has uh, an offshore capacity of around 78 gigawatts and an onshore capacity of 200 gigawatts. So that's just South, uh, Saudi Arabia on its own. And then in terms of um, the targets, there are very ambitious targets in each separate country. There's no one specific target for the entire region. Uh, so, for example, in Egypt, there is a target for 42% of renewable energy uh, by the year 2030. Uh, and then also s similar targets for Saudi Arabia, for Oman, and uh, for Morocco. Uh, if you look at the current installed wind capacity, most of the wind is coming from Morocco and from Egypt. However, now with more interest in renewable energy, you will find that there's going to be more wind uh, around the, uh, the Middle East region. Uh, until very recently, most of the, uh, the wind uh, equipment turbines uh, installed in the Middle East were all European turbines. Um, let's take Egypt for an example. Uh, Egypt until 2021 had only European suppliers. So we had, for example, Siemens Gamasa, Vestas, Nordex were the main suppliers that were on the ground. However, now you will see that there is more competition. Uh, and that includes more Chinese suppliers. So uh, most of the new projects that are being installed currently in Egypt are being supplied by um, Chinese wind suppliers. So for example, we're seeing projects uh, that are being supplied by uh, uh, Goldwind and also Envision. Um, and there's basically more competition between European and uh, Chinese suppliers. So of course, hydrogen requires both uh, solar capacity and also wind to work together in, in hybrid uh, and uh, uh, the Middle East is very well positioned uh, to provide both solar and wind and um, there are a number of potential uh, green hydrogen hubs currently in the Middle East so we have for example uh, Morocco, Egypt, Oman and Saudi Arabia are all potential green hydrogen hubs not only because of their uh, potential in wind capacity and solar capacity but also uh, in the fact that they're very strategically positioned geographically for the export of green hydrogen. Uh, so there is, I mean, currently uh, there are a couple of uh, pilot uh, projects uh, in the Middle East, but we're going to see in the future um, potential boom of green hydrogen in the Middle East uh, due to the very good uh, wind um, resources that we have in the Middle East and also the solar resources that we have, in addition to the, the proximity to Europe. Uh, Egypt is looking into, uh, into to, uh, connecting to Europe through uh, two potential interconnectors, so one with Italy and also another one uh, through Greece. Um, these are still at a very early stage. Uh, currently they're just being, um, they're going through a feasibility study. This is really going to open up uh, the potential of more investment in renewable energy in uh, these regions because that means that we can not only provide uh, local renewable energy uh, resources but also uh, the potential to export these resources to Europe which is a very big market for us.